Learning the mathematical concepts in AI and machine learning is important, especially if you want to transition into this field and excel at it. And if you think learning the math in machine learning is hard, you are not alone. So let me make it easier for you. I'm about to share with you all the important steps that you need to take so that if there is an algorithm out there that you need to learn, you will never struggle again. When I first tried to learn the math, I made many mistakes, but this blueprint that I follow now helped me so much and made it so much easier to learn the mathematics in machine learning. So watch until the end as I share the mistakes that I made, the blueprint that I follow now that works so well for me. And it may just be the thing that you need to never feel that math is hard, especially for machine learning. And I will reveal the most useful resources that I used and that will help you. And as always, I don't expect you to agree with me 100% on this. So if you disagree and if you have a better way, feel free to share with us down below in the comment section. Let us know what you think works better or what works for you. All I ask is be respectful of others. And if what I share with you helps you, type helps in the comments below and hit that like button. Now let's get to it. What does it take to learn the mathematical concepts? I want to focus on what is possible and what is needed. By the end of this video, I don't want you to feel like learning the math is over overwhelming. So how did I learn these basics? I would read about things like backpropagation and activation function in terms of neural networks and also things like PCA just briefly, superficially over the internet. I would spend hours watching videos that illustrate these concepts very superficially without really understanding the underlying math that actually describes how these concepts work. Don't get me wrong, it helps but it wasn't good enough for me to apply these methods to my domain of interest. I struggled with data preparation and to understand why some models work and some others don't. And also why sometimes my models are 100% accurate on the test set or why sometimes the mean absolute error is crazy high. Then I started doing something unknowingly at first and it helped me a lot. And you know what else will help me right now? The like button. Click that like button and subscribe to the channel. I am planning on releasing more videos teaching the math and your like goes a long way in encouraging me to produce more videos. And yes, producing such videos do take a lot of time and effort. So you might see me release more videos maybe every few weeks. So let's get back. Unknowingly, I would start focusing on the mathematics. I would pull up a book or get the equations from a blog post on the internet and start coding it. By the way, I'll share some resources here in just a minute, so bear with me. Then I started coding the math from scratch using a simple data set or some made up random numbers from using the NumPy library. In some cases, I even went as far as plotting the data to get a better idea. Let me show you an actual example here. These days we have ChatGPT so we can use them, but if you want to code and learn Python, I highly recommend that you code this yourself. But here's an example of PCA that I just asked ChatGPT to write a code for, and it starts with a class for PCA. Now, if you're not familiar with classes, if you want a much simpler code, you can always ask it to simplify this code, but you can see it, it initializes the number of components, the components and the mean uh, that we need to actually calculate or perform PCA. And there's also functions that will fit and transform the data. And it also uses some dummy data to actually carry out PCA. Now, this is a very superficial example. If you wanna get into the details, the nitty gritty details, like you can ask it to calculate how or write a specific code to actually get the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for a given matrix of data or a given covariance matrix. What I like to do is actually ask it to write a pseudo code instead of the actual code itself. And then I can use the steps that it provides to actually write my own code. As you can see, it provides a section for input, what goes into, into the model and output is what the model actually does for you. And then it also provides a step-by-step -step instruction, like first standardize the data set, then compute the covariance matrix of the standardized data set 
and it says compute the eigenvalues, eigenvectors using the covariance matrix. And then it sorts the eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors and also selects the top K eigenvectors and then transforms the original data set using those eigenvectors. So you can clearly see this breakdown step by step and also within each step, it provides a good description. Like it says, compute the mean for the given set of features, then subtract the mean from each feature value. And then it also says like, if you want, you can also standardize by dividing whatever matrix you get from here. Step two, you can also divide it by the standard deviation to scale the features. And then it also gives a formula to compute the covariance matrix. Now, the thing with formula is I would always refer a standard textbook to make sure that these formulas that chat GPT writes is actually correct. And also for each of these steps that it provides, use a textbook to verify the steps because sometimes chat GPT can miss very important steps. But you can see how this pseudocode will actually help you to dig into the details of PCA, for example. And what I would say is don't just write the code, also print out these variables, see what they are, see what Lambda is, for example, see what your covariance matrix looks like and what the projection matrix looks like print them out. And also if you have a simple data set that we saw earlier, it simplifies a lot of the math. So you can also do it side by side by hand and actually see how it works. Don't use coding and chat GPT as a way to skip over the math. Use it instead to save time on the computation and also display results in a more simpler way that you can understand. Here's an example where I ask it to write a numerical differentiation, uh, a code, a simple code for that, and it does that too. Then I also asked it to write a simple code for backpropagation from scratch. And you can see it shows like activation function, the derivative of the sigmoid activation function, then what it defines the loss function. It also writes a class for a neural network. Now this is simple enough, but also very superficial, remember? So dig into each line of code that it writes and try to understand them as much as you can. But the good thing about this is it shows that you need a forward pass then you need a backward pass to update the weights. And then all of that is put in here with the method that trains the actual model. And in just a minute here, I will share the textbook that I use to actually learn the math from scratch. And this book will help you too. This is just one example, but what you should be doing is practicing this on real data sets from places like Kaggle. Remember, you have to do this by hand. Simply watching me do this is not going to help you. By the way, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please hit that like button. It goes a long way in supporting our channel. Thank you. Now the question is how deep should you go? That is up to your interest, but I highly encourage you to not skip it entirely. And if you follow this strategy that I just showed you, even if you don't know the basics of linear algebra or calculus, you can still learn as you go. Ultimately, there are a core group of concepts that will be common for most of the models out there. So as a beginner, learn these first. And by the way, I will display this book on screen right now for you to use because I use this book specifically for learning most of the basic math that's out there. And there will be links to these resources down below in the description. Do check them out. But don't stick to one resource. If you don't understand a concept from one book, try to explore other resources out there or even try to explore some YouTube videos out there. Now let's get to this list of concepts that you need to learn. I'll put them up on screen so you can take a note. Number one, learn everything there is about matrices, its properties, multiplying two matrices, eigen decomposition and determinant, etc. You will need this to analyze data and process data and also do things like PCA that I just showed you a while ago. Then learn concepts in probability. What are random variables? What are probability distributions, expectation value, variance, covariance, and correlation. Also learn Bayes rule with some examples. You need probability to understand your data and the results from your models. Then you need to learn about numerical computation. If not all, at least try to learn gradient descent, which is used to find a local minima. This book has an example of minimizing linear least squares using gradient descent. They even have a website which has some exercises and a forum as well. And this entire book is available on their website for free. 
check them out. Where was I? Gradient descent. Try to write a code for gradient descent. Then learn the basics of calculus. Assuming you have taken at least level one of calculus in school, learn about the chain rule, which is at the heart of backpropagation. Then there is this last part that isn't too heavy on the mat, but it's very important that you should learn. This is the theory of machine learning itself. Learn how to build models by learning terminologies like regression, train, test, and validation set, labels or targets, weights, and generalization error. Learn about regularization and hyperparameter tuning and how you can use cross-validation to tune the hyperparameters. And lastly, bias and variance in how you can use intuition from this to prevent your model from either overfitting or underfitting. I know that this might seem like a lot, but remember the strategy that I showed you. That strategy has helped me go a long way. And believe me when I say this, if you learn to code from the basics, all the mathematical concepts involved in machine learning, you will go a long way too. With that said, if you need ideas on applying machine learning models in your field, this video here will help you. Until then, leave a comment and a like down below and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.